Good morning, folks. We've got a big earthquake, big weather event, fun, interesting, and bombshell-like science news upcoming. As you have likely noticed, the Solar Dynamics Observatory is in roll and calibration mode, which happens a few times every year, and somehow the blank portions always seem staggered by camera, so if we use more than one, there's never any time missing. Alas, let's go over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star in 193 angstroms of light, coronal whole system departing on the south. Equatorial bright spot incoming from the left still lacks any sunspot activity below those bright umbral magnetic fields. And the solar wind took the most minor of plasma speed intensifications overnight. That's the little hump on the right in purple. Matching a similar hump below in green, that's plasma temperature, and having followed the density peak up in orange. That was only a minor coronal whole stream impact, and so geomagnetic effects from it are minuscule. Folks, that is a hole made by lightning just like the arc discharge craters that Billy Elverton has showed us many times in our plasma lab. Dallas-Fort Worth officials describe the largest lightning strike they've ever seen, and the aftermath covers three normal-sized parking spots in the lot. Incredibly lucky they didn't hit any underground fuel tanks of the gas station in whose parking lot it struck, and incredibly amazing to see this potentially first modern example of a lightning arc discharge crater. Folks, the big earthquake requires some backstory. Today is we set a record for the most constrained and smallest high alert coverage area in our model since its inception. The black and yellow regions seek further signals either in the atmosphere or deep below, but the red is where the worry is currently highest and the Philippines alert star took another direct hit. Some had asked why we didn't cancel that alert after the 6.8 gave it a direct hit days ago. Well, because the signals didn't stop there. Also had a noteworthy rumble in Africa, and hopefully that's a one-off event and not a new sequence beginning there. Up first in the science news is an interesting piece, getting us into the right mindset of they don't know what they don't know until they look. While every model of energy distribution on Earth says that it's sunlight or, in rare cases, deep ocean volcanic energy being the source determining life density, at an odd midway point of depth and with no volcanoes below, they found coral in abundances not making any sense. Very fun little read there. And now for some more hard-hitting science. Up first, we just talked about colliding planets, and I agree with the commenter who said it seems to be their explanation for everything. That statement gets even more true today as they say it is those collisions that explain close-in giant exoplanets with wildly eccentric orbits. There are a ton of those around stars in the galaxy, and they can't currently explain that. Up next, a bit of Halloween fun. Can't believe the month is over already. Where did it go? But apart from the goofball antics, let's remember that this is a single star feature here. One massive interior sphere is blasting and sculpting and perhaps adding more in periodic recurrent nova events. Let's go next to a nearly complete torus around a galaxy and that's just in ionized oxygen. The full ring is there and complements the actual purpose of the study, which was to spot the phenomenal outflowing galactic winds. They were able to make a 3D model of the structure, and interestingly, it does appear that what we are seeing is truly the Taurus large-scale structure around the galaxy and the centrally penetrating and protruding cosmic jet from its active nucleus, a gorgeous bit of toroidal astrophysical plasma. And this leads us into our top story, molecular clouds. Veteran observers know that the big story last year was Sophia and Alma teaming up to suggest that plasma turbulence and magnetic fields are what controlled star formation in those molecular clouds, not gravitational collapse. But how do those clouds get there in the first place? Is that gravity? Nope. For those who dig deeper on this one when they discuss turbulent Mach number, those are the indicators of the plasma turbulence and dynamics, which they say indeed join magnetic fields and the overall density and temperature of the ionized gases as the controlling features in the creation of these magnetic plasma star nurseries known as molecular clouds. We greatly appreciate your support. Now, while the climate and catastrophe movies may excite you more, they both require the right physics. Plasma cosmology is where you get it. And if you don't know, we have tons of professors on that one and the first ever declassified information from government labs after the 30 minute mark. It took a lot for us to be able to share that, so give it the time if you care about any of these topics. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. 
Be safe, everyone.